So the Sinatra Club was um, a secret mafia gambling establishment that I created in 1971, in the winter of 71. And John Gotti came uh, from prison in February 72 and started to uh, frequent the place two or three times a week playing poker. A lot of people from a lot of uh, organized crime families were frequent, frequenting the place. I mean, right. uh, there was a war going on on the streets between yes. them. But there was a, a war between families at the same time, 1972, but somehow, inexplicably, uh, mob families from each of the five different crews, the Gambino, the Bonanno, the Genovese, the Columbos, and um, the Lucchese, all managed to stop there and gamble at night. And there was no violence and no guns allowed. And we would laugh and that were the rules, like, you know, okay, we'll gamble here, but we're not going to have any tension. And that sort of worked until we came up and hatched an idea about a, a bullion heist. And Gotti got involved with the heist that I was going to do, a hijacking. And we took one member from each family and pulled off the heist. And it sort of solidified and quelled the uh, war that was taking place in 1972. It was a hijack of uh, truck. We hijacked a truck full of bullion, silver bullion. In the middle of New York City on the Long Island Expressway, broad daylight. Broad daylight? Broad daylight, right. How did you pull that up? We, I just cut the truck off. Uh, two guys jumped out of the car with shotguns and masks and uh, jumped in the truck, put the guns to the windshield, jumped in the truck. We drove it off and uh, took it to a building and unloaded all the bullion. That, that quick. In 84 or 86, you uh, answered the witness protection program and testified against John Gotti and uh, changed change your whole life. Afterwards you, you had the new names, you new address, new life. Right. And how did you end up leaving the program and writing writing a script for a movie? Well sometime in the early 80s I had met several people in the entertainment business in New York City. One was Marduk Martin, he was the author, the screenwriter of Raging Bull, Mean Streets, New York, New York. And then I had come to Hollywood in 1989 and met up with him. Uh, living in the Witness Protection Program, I had a desire to become a screenwriter, to take some of the experiences that I had lived and turn them into film. What were some of the things you were asked to do, and I, I won't say forced, because I guess you did them willingly, when you were with the Mafia? Well, basically, uh, what you see on television is a real accurate portrayal of, of Wise Guy, the crime that we did, hijack trucks right here in New Jersey. I mean, for years, Rob Banks, beat people up, break their legs and arms, put them in the hospital. Uh, everything you see, we did. I mean, I lived that life. That's all I did. I was a professional criminal. I mean, that's all I did. Even the FBI helped during the shooting of this movie, see that's what They helped with uh, what kind of... With, what kind of the FBI did manage to assist us in a small, small way of giving us the exact dialogue of, of a man taking the oath to enter the mob, the initiation. Oh, there was wire tape? This yes. How they, they got it. Yes, and because I never took the oath in the mob, I didn't know exactly what was being said. So we did use some of the wire taps to write the dialogue in the opening scene of the movie. So they did help us, and that was Joe Pistone, the same Joe Pistone, uh, who was the Donnie Brasco character, uh, played by Johnny Depp and Donnie Brasco. You said you were feeling kind of melancholic when you were shooting the movie. Yeah. Please tell me about it. Uh, it was a strange uh, experience because I remember after we built the set, and I was there building the sets to create uh, authenticity of what that Sinatra called looked like. And then finally when we started to shoot, I felt very odd. I felt almost, almost detached and melancholic. At the same time, what I didn't know was it was a, a very cathartic type of experience. I was going through a healing period because my best friend who had been murdered uh, had told me to get out of the life in 1974. And of course, that took me more than 10 years finally to make that decision. And, and in those 10 years, the mob changed dramatically. And uh, naturally, uh, I am so excited that I finally got out of that life and moved over to Hollywood. Not to say that Hollywood's any easier. I think Hollywood's more difficult 
the mob. It's just they don't kill you with a gun. They rip you off with a pencil, you know, so that's what Hollywood's about. I mean, the whole society turned out to be that way. I mean, with the Wall Street and right. everything. Exactly, Everyone's exactly. Right, exactly. Everyone's yeah. But we do get, I get a lot of attention, you know, people know about Sinatra Club. I've got to meet some beautiful people. We had a great screening. Uh, Kareem Abdul was there. Uh, Ernest Borgnine was there. Stallone was there. They came to the screening at the DGA. We had 600 people there. Right. So they, they embraced the movie. It's a small budget movie, but it has a good message. And I think uh, people will enjoy it when it finally hits the big screen in September.